Are you sending out resumes all the time and are you hearing? First of all, are you selling yourself well enough? Is your resume exciting and interesting? Or is it one of these long litanies, laundry lists of tasks that you had to do in the positions that you used to have? Resumes have changed, my friends. They are modern. They are full of achievements and accomplishments. They are very specifically organized in a way that make them intriguing. So your resume needs to be short, it needs to be modern, and it needs to be exciting. My name is Jen Swanson, your career coach, and let's get into number two, which is are you, as they used to say, papering the town with the very same resume? Are you blanketing all of the job postings with exactly the same document? Or are you taking the time that you need to take to tailor the resume to the specific job posting, the specific job description? If you are bulk uploading the same resume to multiple different job postings, well, then you might as well be golfing. And I say that because golfing to me is long and boring and a waste of time because I am terrible at it. My ball keeps getting into ponds of water and little thingies full of sand and, and I, just, I just don't get it. Plus, I'm not very patient. There are lots of people who are really good at it, and I'm sure it's fun for them, but it's not fun for me. If you stay till the very, very, very end, I'll tell you a story about that. Anyhow, back to the subject at hand. Do not bulk upload or paper the town with the very, very same document. Instead, get the job description and reverse engineer your resume. Make it fit the job description perfectly, as long as you're being honest about it, and take a look at what they are really looking for. And no, it's not exciting. And yes, it can take a lot of extra time, but honestly, it's really, really worth making the resume that you send tailored exactly to the job description. The people will notice. I notice when I was going through resumes. Doing this extra work is exactly what will make your resume stand out. Third thing is, do you have a LinkedIn profile? And if you don't, why not? I completely get that you might not want to have a social media platform, but in 2022 and beyond, and I hate to say this, but not being online, not having a social media profile of some kind is frankly a little bit suspicious and is seen to be a little bit weird. And I completely get that social media has all sorts of things wrong with it. Um, there's lots of good things about it too, but there are an awful lot of things that are not healthy and not good about it. However, if, if the hiring manager cannot find more information on you by doing a search online, then they can find no more than the couple of pages that you have submitted. And when someone else can have a very long LinkedIn profile with all, you know, links to projects and things that they've done and videos and all the things you can't jam into a two-page resume, then you're not going to stand up against that. So it, even if you do it just for the purposes of getting a job, then I suggest you work on a LinkedIn profile. And if you have an old one, make sure it's up to date because you will be searched online. So fix these three things and hopefully you will get more traction with your next applications. Maybe you're already doing these three things. Well, there are lots of other reasons why your resume may not get seen by human eyeballs. And, and that's one of the things it may actually not ever get seen by human eyeballs because it might be running through an automated tracking system, an ATS system. Is your resume optimized for ATS? Do you know what an ATS is? If you don't, take a look at the video on the screen at the end of this video and stick around for a little bit and see what that's about because there are keywords and things in the job description that could be really, really helpful for including in your resume so that it does make it through an automated system before it can get to real human eyeballs. So take a look at that quick explainer video and I will see you over there.
Thanks for staying till the end. I have a couple of extra things to share with you and a story at the end that I promised you. The first tip is to try not to seem desperate, even if you are desperate for a job or you desperately want this particular job that you're applying for. Try not to bug the person. Uh, did you get my resume? Did you get my resume? Did you know, send them one email, maybe a good length of time after you've applied, like at least the next week or maybe even a week and a half, two weeks, depending on how big the organization is, it can move like molasses. It can take a really long time for things to get through the entire system, especially if there are dozens and dozens, and in some cases, hundreds and hundreds of applications. So you have to be a little bit patient and try not to be desperate about it. The second tip that I have for you today is to keep applying. Keep tailoring your resume, even though that one that you sent might be the one you really, really, really want. Don't put all the eggs in one basket, right? Keep tailoring resumes, keep sending them out, keep applying, and then eventually you will have lots and lots of practice with interviews and with talking to people and with deciding what you really want. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to turn somebody down because you've taken this perfect job that you applied for way back when that finally caught up to you and you got an interview. So don't stop until you've got a signed job offer in your hand. And that brings me to my story. This happened when I was about 20 years old, which is a very long time ago. And I went golfing with my then boyfriend who had just received a beautiful, I think, beautiful, he said it was a beautiful set of golf clubs from his parents for a gift. And we went golfing and as luck would have it, uh, my little ball ended up somewhere next to a tree. There were probably lots of trees around, but next to a tree. And so for reasons that still to this day remain unclear, um, physics and otherwise, I decided to take all of my effort and all of my strength, and I took the club and I went thwack. And to my horror, I realized that the shaft of this brand new golf club that I don't think he had even tried yet, um, cracked. And he was way across the golf course and he looked up, I guess, from when he heard the sound, probably everybody else on the golf course did too. And he said, is everything okay? And I said, no. And he said, what's going on? And I held the shaft, the golf club up and almost in slow motion, it went <laughs> and dangled like this as I burst into tears. In the end, I was able to replace the golf club shaft which at the time cost $25, which was a lot of money. <laughs> I tell you, it was a long time ago. And all was well, but I honestly have not gone real golfing since. I've been mini golfing, which is fun and I can do that. But I, I, just, um, I just am not interested in trying to get a little ball into a hole like a million miles away over hills and dales and water. And oh, there are many, many more things I would rather be doing. But I ended up with a good story. <laughs> so <laughs> if you have something that you utterly failed at that turned out to be a good story, leave it for me in the chat below because it's kind of fun. All of our success is built on a mountain of failures. and Some of those have pretty good stories. All right, I will see you next time. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button and take good care.